Hello friends, this is Ishwa here. It's been 100 videos since our last video. Thank you so much for that. And in this video, let us see the installation and features of Havoc OS 2.0 on the Redmi Note 4, which is running on top of Android Pi. So this ROM has been a lot more friendly to customizations like the Resurrection Remix ROMs. It has a lot and lot of features named as Havoc settings, which takes almost half an hour to go through. Yeah, it is not as flooded as Resurrection Remix, but still more than enough for an Android Pi ROM this early. Now, let us talk about the internals of this ROM. Again, it is running on top of Android Pi, which is the latest ROM from Android. Surprisingly, what I like the most is that it has the September Android security patch level. Wow! And this ROM has the digital well-being built-in without wanting us to install a separate APK for it to work. The pie graph with our app's usage is very good to have a look of what we have used so far. The Wi-Fi and mobile data are working super fine. It is very good to see the mobile signals to be almost full all the time which we don't get on many ROMs. Default Google Camera comes with the Google Apps. If you want, we can install a Gcam which supports portrait mode on our phone. That can be downloaded from various websites. I will leave a link in the description box below for that. Now, regarding the display settings and looks, we have the usual display size, device theme that is the dark and light and the ads and color in the display settings. Talking about the dark theme, it has some problems with the notification center which makes the text invisible. The developer has mentioned that it will be fixed in the next update. Alternatively, the light theme is usable and good looking. The Google's default fonts are a perfect fit for this ROM. The rounded corners of the display is cool and fits with the rounded corners for our device. Again, as this is an Android Pi ROM, we have our new recent screen which is a lot better than that of our Android Oreo and earlier ROM style. It is much more simpler now and gives us a set of recently used apps at the bottom which makes it handy to open apps. Many have confusions regarding the way to toggle the screen. Just tap the particular app icon and you will get the app info and split screen options to choose. We also have a new volume panel and a slightly revamped notification center. Now let's get to the cons of this ROM. Now I'm not complaining about this ROM as this requires a lot of hard work from the developers. Instead I'm just letting you know the downsides for you to either choose this ROM or not. Now sometimes this is what happens when we receive a notification in the lock screen even though when we are in the light theme. Now this does, doesn't happen for all, all apps but a very few. Sadly, there are no navigation button controls in this ROM. This is not a problem but still when we double tap the home button, it locks the screen. Even if we compromise on this, the main problem is that it makes a hiccup every time we press the home button as it waits for a bit more time than usual to detect our second touch. Now all these problems with the navigation buttons can be replaced with the on-screen navigation bar. And yes, the navigation buttons on the device itself can be disabled. But sometimes the navigation bar also gives a problem. The navigation bar doesn't fit properly when we open an app but after a touch on the navigation bar, it, it just realigns itself properly. And if you haven't yet joined our telegram group, there are links down in the description. If your Google Photos or Google Play Music doesn't detect your media on the memory card, just eject the memory card and mount it again. It will be fixed. And that is pretty much it for the features, pros and cons for this ROM. Overall, this can be used as a daily driver without any major problems. But if you want the perfect stability, go for the Lineage OS 16, which I have already made a video on. If you want to get the updates on battery and screen on time, do join our telegram group. Now let's get to the installation part. Download the ROM zip file from the description below. Also download the G apps from the OpenG apps website. Choose ARM64 for platform and 9.0 under your preferred variant. Make sure that a necessary backup uh, of all your needs 
and the internal storage which includes your music, pictures, videos, etc. won't be erased but the apps and its data will be erased. So I would recommend you to take a back backup of your necessary contacts, whatsapp, chats, etc. beforehand. Now just boot to your preferred custom recovery, official TWRP would be better. Wipe the system, data, cache, dalvik or cache and vendor if you have a trouble recovery. Now flash the wrong zip file and the gapps which you have downloaded. Done. You will boot into the wrong. It takes 5 to 10 minutes for the boot so sit back and relax. I am very happy that the google setup wizard does work with this rom but which didn't work on the AOSP and at Pi rom. So that's pretty much it. I hope I have covered the features and installation of this rom. If you like this video hit the like button and if you haven't yet shared this video to your friends please do share as it helps me a lot. And if you want to get more updates just join our telegram group. So thank you for watching. Have a great day. Peace.